Oi, welcome to the Big Bad Beauty Dish British Bake Off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 112 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD. <coughs> oh. oh, excuse me. Sorry. That was totally inappropriate. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we are talking beauty dishes, more specifically, different types of beauty dishes. I recently picked up a few extra beauty dishes in a gear sale and thought it'd be interesting to compare these four beauty dishes and see how they stack up against each other. If you have worked with portrait lighting at all, you have probably used or at least seen photographers use beauty dishes as lighting modifiers. The beauty dish is a very odd modifier because it's great for headshots and portraits, but not really used on group shots. Also, the traditional metal dish is prone to damage when traveling, so while it might be loved by a photographer, it could find itself staying home because of damage it might take in transit. Three of these beauty dishes are collapsible models at different price points, which allows for a beauty dish look without the worry of damage during travel. All beauty dishes consist of a large dome, kind of a salad bowl shape, usually around 20 to 24 inches in diameter. Inside is a small disc that blocks the direct light of the flash, instead bouncing it to fill the entire dish. The disc is also used as a site for lining up the modifier to the subject. If the disc is not pointed right at the subject, you could get a light leak out of the side and get a direct rather than a bounce look. The look you get from the dish is a pool of light on the face with a noticeable fall off around the rest of the body. Let's take a look at our four contestants. First is the old studio standby, the metal beauty dish. I'm not really sure who makes this particular dish as I got this as part of a gear sale. Next is the pro photo specific OCF beauty dish. Then we have the wallet pleasing impact beauty dish and rounding out the lineup is the Chimera 24 inch beauty dish. All the dishes have white interiors and are about the same size, making this ideal for comparing light quality. Before we get into things, I do want to disclose that I worked with Chimera on a few projects many years ago, and one of them was a video for this very beauty dish. A link can be found in the comments. While product and money did change hands, Chimera didn't contribute to the content of that video, and my review was my opinion alone. This test is not only about which dish produces the best quality of light, because that can be rather subjective, but also the cost and build quality of each dish. Travel size and ease of setup will also be looked at. But first, let's take a look at that quality of light. I was lucky enough to have friend and stunning model Zakota come down for these tests. All of the dishes were mounted on a Profoto B1 with no other lights or bounce used in the test shots. I didn't move the light at all when I changed from one dish to another, nor did I change the power settings. I wanted to see how the light quality and quantity would change with each dish. The metal beauty dish was up first and would serve as a baseline for the other dishes to follow. I metered the light so I was getting F8 and you could see that subtle pool of light on Zakota's face and the fall off on the background. Next up was the Chimera collapsible beauty dish, which seemed to limit the light fall off on the background much more than the traditional dish. I also had to increase my aperture to F13 to get the same exposure as the metal beauty dish. This might be a plus though for those running battery powered strobes, as this dish seems to give you more light output than the metal dish. Profoto was up next, and it also had an increase of power to F11, a full stop more than the baseline metal dish, but it had a much more subtle fall off on the background than the Chimera, closer to the look of the traditional dish. Last up was the impact dish, and it produced results at F8, just like the metal dish. The background is getting more light than any of the other three dishes produced but it's also important to point out that the impact is 28 inches where most of the other dishes are closer to 22 inches. But if you're looking to do some pixel peeping, here are the four images next to each other with a bit of a tighter composition. Did you have a preference? Well, the impact was A, the metal dish was B, Chimera was C, and the Profoto was D. My initial reaction is that all of these dishes produce similar looks, except for the Chimera, which reduced light fall off and added a bit of extra contrast to the subject. This might be great for those photographers that are trying to control light spill, but if you're looking for that subtle light fall off of a traditional dish, you might like the other three more. But there's more to this test than visual looks, as mentioned before. Travel with a traditional metal beauty dish can be a real pain and can very well find the dish dented and beat up if you're not careful with it, which may result in having to purchase another dish. 
No matter how good a light modifier might be, it is useless if you have to leave it at home. So let's look at the setup for each dish and their travel size. Of course, the metal dish obviously has the fastest setup time, but that also means it has the worst travel factor. It could also be heavy when set up. I've had two beauty dishes fall off of lights due to poor mounting issues in the past. Next is the Chimera, which is well built. The fabric of the dish is very thick and durable, and the rods in the speed ring are super tough. Setup time is pretty quick, but all that Velcro used in the construction of the dish can stick to other items. Profoto sets up in a similar fashion with a bit less Velcro, but the build quality is far short of the Chimera. Almost all of the rods are bent due to setup, so you need to take care when using this modifier. But a big plus for the Profoto is the travel size of the dish. This dish uses the new OCS speed ring, which is much smaller than the traditional Profoto ring. This means everything can fit in the bag, and the form factor is so small that it can fit in the laptop pouch of one of my backpacks. So no matter what, I always have a beauty dish with me. The impact sets up very fast due to this crazy erector set-like linkage, and I think after you do it a few times, you'll not be worried about catching your fingers in that linkage. The build quality is surprisingly well done, especially since this is the economic bargain of the group. But the impact is very large in the travel size category compared to the Chimera and especially the Profoto. I do want to point out that both Profoto and Chimera can easily be converted from beauty dish mode to either large reflectors, small octaboxes, with the possibility to add grids to either setup. This does expand the versatility of those products. The metal beauty dish and impact center discs are in a fixed position, so this pretty much makes them only beauty dishes. Also, the Profoto and Chimera speed rings can be used with other lighting modifiers, both Okta and softboxes, so you can get some extra mileage out of the investment in those rings. So how did our contestants fare after this beauty dish bake-off? Well, if you're a studio photographer that travels a small amount, I think the traditional beauty dish proves why it's been a go-to modifier for years. It produces that classic look with super fast setup times, and if you're careful, it will give you a lifetime of use. Also, the metal dish can be really affordable, depending on the ring mount and dish manufacturer. But if you are a location photographer, you will find traveling with this dish difficult and will probably leave it at home more often than taking it out on location. If you're looking for travel form factor, setup speed, and value, I found the impact to check all of those boxes. My only issue is the size of the dish when travel mode. It's pretty big compared to the Chimera and the Profoto, which might be an issue for those that are limited on space when traveling with other gear. But this is really the only issue I could find. This is definitely a best buy for those on a budget and on the road. The Profoto OCF is a good dish. I think I will be able to get years of use out of this dish as long as I'm taking care when setting up and tearing down. What I like most about this dish is the ability to put it in a laptop sleeve on my backpack. There are a few times when I forget to pack a dish and then I regret it once I'm on location. However, this is by far the most expensive investment with ring, diffusion, and grid. The cost is close to $500 and it is Profoto specific, so you're out of luck if you're using other lighting company strobes. While this bake-off showed me how good a traditional dish is, it reinforced my opinion on the Chimera dish. It's just built like a tank, and while pricing almost $150 more than the Pro Photo, it can be used with just about any lighting system and speed lights. It could also be used as a small octobank, a large reflector, with and without grids. I think of all the dishes tested today, this is the only one I'll still be using 5 to 10 years from now. It's almost overbuilt. The Pro Photo and Chimera can seem like super expensive options compared to the budget-friendly traditional metal dish. But I want to stress that I've ruined two dishes in the past and was on my third when I got my Chimera dish. The cost of replacing dishes due to damage can add up, so don't lose sight of that. I've also worked with photographers that didn't bring traditional dishes into the field due to travel size and potential damage. Like a laptop, you are paying for portability with these two dishes. But this also shows how much value there is in that impact beauty dish. So what is your go-to light for headshots and portraits? How important is size and weight in your gear when you leave the studio? Share your personal experiences in the comments below and any beauty dish damage stories you might have. Please like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. This is MD Welch wishing you all the best from the photo kitchen.